Alrighty guys, welcome back to another chess video and in this lesson we are going to be going over the Chagorin defense or variation depends on what you want to call it and we are actually going to be starting on move number six because I covered the first five moves in my last video. If you haven't watched it yet then check it out. I go over all these opening moves in detail but just to run through them real quick and show you guys how this position is set up even if you saw the first video it's of course pawn to e4, pawn to e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, bishop to b5, attacking the knight, pawn to a6, kicking away the bishop, bishop retreating to a4, knight to f6, castle, and then bishop to e7. So again, all those moves are covered in my last video, so if you haven't checked that out, go ahead and do it. So now what white is going to do in this line is they're going to take their rook and move it over to e1. Now, what this does is pretty clearly, it defends the e4 pawn. And also, in this line, there's gonna be a big battle for the center. So white is gonna expect that when this happens, they may have a nice, open, juicy lane right here when these two pawns are gone. So just a really uh, better position for our rook. And as a response, what black is gonna do is they're gonna take their pawn and move it to b5. And the obvious goal of this move is to attack our bishop right here so it isn't anymore attacking this knight. However, even though as white we're going to have to retreat our bishop to b3, if we actually take a look at this, and I'll actually go ahead and play this move first. So if we take a look at this, we want to say that yes, we did have to move our bishop, but this isn't that bad for white, specifically because black's pawn structure their B and C pawns are really out of sync. Now, a proper pawn structure would be where they're connected, either the B pawn protecting the C pawn or vice versa. And right now, they are really far apart from each other. And also, on top of that, their knight on C6 is in the way of the C pawn making any progress to help defend the B pawn. So, yes, we did, like I said, have to move our bishop, but it isn't the worst thing for us. Now after this, what's gonna happen is black is just gonna go ahead and castle, and then we are going to do a clever little move, and that is taking our pawn and moving it to c3. Now this simple looking move actually has a couple key benefits, namely providing our bishop with a retreat square to c2, and that's a retreat square because typically what black does is they take their knight at some point in time, move it out to a5, where we then be attacking our bishop on b3, and if we don't want to trade it off, then we can just go ahead and retreat it. And also, another key benefit of this move is it helps prepare the pawn on d2 to move to d4. So like I said, um, preparing this d4 push is going to be critical in the Roy Lopez fighting for the center. So this simple move, pawn to c3, helps those two things. Now from here, black is going to respond with a simple move of its own, and that is pawn to d6. So again, what they're doing, their goal is rung square, is they're protecting the e5 pawn, and also they are helping stabilize their pawn structure on the queen side, and in addition, it's a developing move because now the light square bishop can move out and get to a much better position rather than just chilling on the back rank. So the move that we are going to do in this position as a response to this is actually a move that you wouldn't want to do in a lot of other variations because it breaks one of the core um, opening principles and that is moving the pawns in front of your king so typically the majority of the time you do not want to move these pawns you want to leave them alone because when you move them they weaken uh, the king's protection however if we take a look at black's position we can see that their bishop and also their knight on f6 can possibly go to this g4 square now, if one of those pieces get there, then it's going to be a very annoying uh, position for us. It's going to make our job a lot more difficult. So what we want to do to prevent this is we're actually going to play the move pawn to h3. So again, this takes a lot of the really great options away from black, and that's the main point of that move. Now, from here, black is going to respond with that move that we talked about, knight to a5. So yes, they are attacking our bishop. However, it isn't that bad for us because after we go ahead and play bishop to c2 and we kind of take a step back and assess this position, yes, black can now 
uh, reposition their C pawn into you know somewhere more effective than C7. However, for these minor pieces right here, namely their knight and our bishop, our bishop is in a far better position. We're more towards the center of the board, off the back rank. We are protecting this e4 pawn right here. And as we know, the famous saying, a knight on the rim is dim. A knight on the edge of the board is not nearly as effective as it would be is if it were in the center. So again, even though we did have to move our bishop again and again, this position is beneficial for white. So now what we wanna do, like I said, after the move uh, C2, black is going to indeed take their pawn and move it out to C5. So like I said, there's gonna be a big battle for the center and both sides are kind of, at this point in time, positioning their pieces to do that. So here, now that we did prepare this move pawn to C3, we can actually take our pawn on D2 and now bump it up to D4. So now with this move C3, this pawn on D4 is not only protected by the C pawn, but also our knight and our queen as well. So both sides are really uh, well prepared to go into the battle for the center. And just to follow up with this variation, what black is typically gonna do is reposition their queen most often to C7. And by doing this, it's gonna put the queen in a better position so whenever they want to start fighting for the center, it's going to be, you know, a better position to help support those pieces. And also they are now one uh, bishop move away from being able to connect their rooks on the back rank, which is always a good thing. So that is the overall strategy and concept behind the Chagorin defense or variation. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys in the next chess video.